Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making a diamond painting pen and matching princess ink pen. First thing we got to do is go over to the bandsaw and cut this to shape. Whenever I cut an ink pen blank to shape, I just kind of lay out the, the tubes right on the pen blank, giving about a half inch extra per side in case we get blowout when I drill the blank. Whenever you're using a bandsaw, make sure you don't raise your guard up too much. I raise mine just enough to where my, my fence touches the blade when I'm using my miter gauge. Now they're cut, we take them over to the bandsaw. Now they're cut, we take them over to the drill press. Now this kit that I'm using today uses two different drill bit sizes. One 10 millimeter. one eight Now for acrylics, I always use the standard metal style cutting bit, not the brad point. The brad point bits tend to blow out the backside when you drill all the way through. You can prevent it by not drilling all the way through your blank and then going to the bandsaw and cutting it off or bringing it to a, a belt sander or some other way to cut off the excess. Generally, I end up drilling all the way through the blanks, so I tend to cut them a little bit longer just in case. And whenever you're drilling acrylic, most important part is to take your time and clear the chips from your work. Because if you don't, it'll wobble out the hole, it'll be too big for the tubes. And that's no good. So I got my jaws in here. I got these from PSI, the Penn State Industries. These are centering jaws for my drill vise. And I'm running my machine at about 1500 RPM. This one's variable. As you can see, I got a little bit of blowout on the back side here, but I have plenty of material to sand it or cut it off, as you can see. So I'm gonna just 
sander is just a set up with an 80 grit disc uh, on it. I've sanded all the way past that crack and it leaves me just enough material to square up the edge. I find it easier to trim the material, the extra materials off before I glue the tubes in rather than after. It saves the risk of grinding into your tubes and making them too short to work for the pen. Now since the lava explosions and this one in particular, which is the infinity, tend to be transparent or translucent. I don't want the color of the tube to show through in the final pen. So what I like to do is take some model paint. This is from Testers. And I just shake it up real good. And this is a dark blue color and it'll go really well with the blues and the purples that are in this blank. And using a Q-tip or a cotton swab, paint the inside of the blank. I want to coat it real good. And you do that with both sides. I use a Q-tip because it's one of the few things i found that fits through most of the tubes, or most of the uh, pen barrels. And it does a very good job giving a nice, smooth application. Now with both of those painted, some people tell you you should wait overnight until the paint fully cures. I'm a little bit too impatient for that. I've got too many things to do. So, while I make the diamond painting pen, I'm going to take these over and throw them in my toaster oven. Which I have set at its lowest setting, which is about 150 degrees. It will not melt the acrylic. I've done this many, many times, so it won't catch on fire. It's very low temperature. And I just put it on for an hour and let it bake at 150 to 175 degrees. And I'll come in, turn them when I'm done, turning the uh, diamond painting pen. And they should be perfectly dried and cured and about 25 minutes usually is how long it takes. Okay, I've got the infinity blank mounted on my lathe and I've already rounded it using my round carbide cutter. Now I'm going to be making this in a three ring style and I'll be cutting it.
lot of turners out there use these cutters and they're afraid to turn them. Use them to shear a cut or use them backwards like a scraper. And that's why I made my own tool is I can roll it real easy but I still have a little flat where I know where I'm flat. So as I'm doing these like this, I can get down in the corners and roll it and I can still ride the bevel and take off a real nice clean cut when I want to. And you can see that leaves a nice smooth cut. No chipping, no nothing. And then I'm going to come in with my diamond tip bit and I'm going to make the three rings. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but there are marks marking the center of my pool rest so I can index where bouts the center of this blank should be. And I'm going to cut the first ring, and the first ring will be a little bit bigger than the other two. A lot of people now have started using negative weight cutters, and they work just fine, but I find that a good sharp carbide tip is just as good as the expensive uh, negative weight cutters. I'm starting out with 120, 150 grit. I'll sand this up to 2,000 and uh, finishing on a buffing wheel.
hardest part doing the sanding these beads like this is getting the centers of all the beads smoothed out the same way while not distorting their shape because a lot of times especially with aggressive sandpaper you can flatten the top of a nice rounded bead and then it's not a nice rounded bead anymore it's got a square top and that's not usually what I'm going for that's why I like to finish soft beads like this on the buffing wheel if I can because that soft wheel kind of I have a couple of really nice soft wheels they'll get down in the crevices pretty well. And this blank always turns out so sparkly and so pretty when it's all done and buffed up to a high finish. I've tried using the Zona sandpaper, it's nice. Same way with the micro mesh, it works great. But it saves me a lot of time to just go to my buffing wheel that I got set at a fairly high speed with uh, three different buffing wheels and three different compounds. I'm at 400, one to six. And you can feel as you go, if there's any chips or divots that need to be taken care of, although until you dry it off, you can't really know if you've done enough sanding that you've gotten all the grits from the previous sandpaper until you've dried it all out. We're at 800. And then I'll show you the totally different technique after this. Pen comparing this to a pen turning, which is a completely different thing. That's why a lot of pen turners don't want to make diamond painting pens it's because they don't want to change their setup that they use for all of their money-making pens okay. I'm just finishing up the 2000 grit sandpaper here dry it off and see what we got. And never ever, for any of you turners out there, use a rag on your lathe. If this grabs, it just pulls a piece off and doesn't take my hand with it. And this is a small lathe that's only three quarters of a horsepower. So it'll stop before it hurts you seriously. But if you have a more powerful lathe, it'll rip the uh, paper towel or the rag right out of your hands. Good. Looks good. I'm gonna take it over to the buffing wheel. Okay, here over at my buffing wheel, I have set up a little different than most. This is a yellow stitched buff, and I use it with a black emery compound. This is a very aggressive wheel. I only use it if there's deep scratches or a chip that I missed, and I don't want to go back and re sand the whole piece. This is your typical Tripoli, e. it's partially stitched buff. And it uses a brown triple E compound. This is the equivalent, I believe, to a thousand grit sandpaper. 
it might be 2000 grit on this particular wheel and a white diamond polishing bit which I believe is like 5000 grit I could be wrong but the first thing we do is dress the wheels <laughs> I'm going to use a rake, and this rake cleans out all of the old uh, compound. You don't have to do this every time, but I haven't done it in a while. It'll fluff this right back up. Now I adjust the wheel with my compound. Special attention around the ends where scratch the seam are like a hide. See, it brings up a real nice shine. I have this bright light here to give me an extra view so I can see under a hard light source if I have any scratches I need to go back and polish. wheel I have set up a little different than most this is a yellow stitched buff and I use it with a black emery compound this is a very aggressive wheel I only use it if there's deep scratches or a chip that I missed and I don't want to go back and resand the whole piece this is your typical triple E it's partially stitched buff and it uses a brown triple E compound. This is the equivalent, I believe, to a thousand grit sandpaper. It might be 2000 grit on this particular wheel. And a white diamond polishing bit, which I believe is like 5000 grit. I could be wrong. But the first thing we do is dress the wheels. I'm gonna use a rake. And this rake cleans out all of the old uh, compound. You don't have to do this every time, but I haven't done it in a while. It'll fluff this right.
There's one done. Now on to the rest of the ink pen build. Now the next step in our ink pen build is going to be gluing in the tubes. I use thing I make backups. I always buy a few of these backup replacement lids for my glue bottles because they do get glued on there. You just have to nip the tip with a pocket knife. I usually cut them at an angle. It doesn't really matter if you do or not. But these are the... Some pen, pen kits come with pre-scuffed brass tubes. Some don't. Usually the nicer kits do it for you. Now I'm going to do this two, two ways. First, put the glue inside using thick CA. All the way around. And I take, put it in partially, twisting it as I go in. And I put some on the outside of the tube. That's why I wear gloves, because you, if you don't, you get it all over yourself. You want to get a nice coating on the tube. Push it all the way down in. Recess it just a little bit below the surface. I wipe off the ends. That's a short tube, so I don't usually use a plug in the shorter ones. It's not that hard to get the glue back out. But on these longer, thinner ones, they're a little difficult. So I take a little Play-Doh, smash it right onto the top of the lid there. Nice little plug so you don't get glue in the inside the tube. So again, same as the other. Use a little bit of super glue around the inside. Put your tube in. Tube in the right way. Put the glue. And you'll see that the little bit has dissolved the suit the paint inside the, the blank that I'm making. That's all right. There's plenty of it in there. Now I use a little squirt of activator just to try the glue on the outside. Way it doesn't stick to my table. And I'll wait a few and mill the ends of it nice and flat. Okay, I have mounted on here a 10 millimeter pen, or pen mill, which will flatten the acrylic right to the top of the brass tube. You don't want to shorten the intended size of the pen, just enough where it shines that brass right up. And it cleans most of the super glue, if you got any, out of the inside of the tube, which makes mounting on the lathe and assembling the pen later much easier without the super glue in there. And for the 10 the eight millimeter side, I do not have an eight millimeter pilot shaft, 
but I've found that a seven millimeter with a piece of seven millimeter tube makes almost exactly eight millimeters. So you can be sure that you've centered up the ends of your blanks. Of course, the drawback is sometimes you completely lose that seven millimeter tube. Ah, found it. There you go. Now the other side. The little piece of seven millimeter tube is just there, so you get a dead center. It's not the end of the world if you can't get the dead center of this. It just makes it a little harder. Now it's ready for mountain on lathe. Okay, now we're going to mount the pen mandrel onto my lathe here. I gotta take off my chuck. And a pen mandrel mounts just like this, right into the headstock. Use a Morris taper. And we mount it. bushings. Each pen has a different set of bushings. And we use, this pen uses a three bushing set. And we mount it like so. And sometimes they go on real easy. And others, you need to take a file, which I can't seem to find at the moment. Typical in my shop. This is a little diamond file that I use sometimes. And it'll take down the burr was any glue that got into the barrels while you were doing your puppy. Now with that mounted, I'll make sure I mount these in the correct order. Since these have a, still have a label on and I cut right in the middle of the label, I can see that the orientation of my blanks is correct. Basically, I know that the, well, this is acrylic, but if it was wood, it would have, the grain would be, would run in the same direction. And this one's being a little difficult. Just need to file a little bit. Chainsaw file works a little bit better. Just takes that little bit of a burr that you get right on the edge and you hit it with the mill, takes it off, and cleans any of the super glue out. There we go. Actually, 
think I'm gonna take this first bushing off. That's just the spacer bushing. Bring on it. Yeah, that's much better. I'll put the spacer bushing on the other end. Make sure everything's lined up. And I crank it pretty tight. Bring the tailstock up. Just a little bit of pressure. I usually give it a little bit of about an eighth of a twist on my tailstock wheel and then back it off and then just bring it right up till it's just sitting there. It takes a few before it seats. If I get a catch or something, I'll have to tighten up my tailstock a little bit. But you don't want to bend your mandrel because then your blanks will be off center. They'll be a little oval. We're going to start by the same way as you do a DP bend. Or anything and round it and shape it. I like to give my pens a little bit of a taper. Down to the point. A lot of bush, a lot of pens are set up that the tips or the nibs are thinner than the, than the back side of the main barrel. Which suits me perfectly. I'm just taking real light cuts. Just till I get right to the to the thickness of that bushing right there. I got right to the proper thickness in the back. Get it right up perfect in the front. The bushings are your guide. To how thick. to what the diameter of the parts you're attaching are. Now if I was using something that had a thicker nib, it'd be a bigger bushing. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna sand it up. Now unlike my diamond painting pens when I make them, I usually start my sanding at 220 because with the pen mandrel support you don't get the whip or the chatter that you get on a diamond painting pen. So you don't have as many chips or deformations or little divots in an ink pen as you do with a diamond painting pen. I know some turners like to turn these pens between centers and it works great for them. 
I just, I'm not set up for it. And I've always done it with the mandrel and it works for me. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm just sanding 320. A little hint for all you turners out there. If you uh, are turning and you got a bit of a back problem or sciatica like I do, get yourself a toolbox or if your wife does yoga, steal one of her yoga blocks, put it down there, and you prop your foot up on it. It has saved my life after having back problems being able to put one foot up on something while I'm standing here for hours turning. And we're at 400. The only problem with bushings is the longer you use them, the more you use them, the more they wear out. So after 30, 40 pens, using the same bushings, you tend to have to replace them. Depending on how aggressive you are with your sanding. Okay, now we're on to the fine grits. And this is just wet and dry uh, automotive sandpaper that I'm using here. The rest is the standard Turner sandpaper you get from Penn State or Wood Turnings or uh, Amazon, anywhere that sells Turner's rolls. I add an 800 to mine because I just feel that it gives me that little bit easier transition into the wet and dry grits. The automotive grits. I don't have to spend as much time and go through the thousand as much if I only sand up to 600. Okay. Now with this one, I find that these little pieces from the uh, certain pen kits are really finicky when you're trying to do them on the buffing wheel. It's hard to keep a hold of them, even if you have a little tool to stick them on. And I don't want them to go flying across the shop, so. On this one, I'm gonna use Dr. Kirk's Micro Magic. I found this stuff about a month or two ago. And as you can see, I ended up liking it. I actually have another set of tubs over there. It works exceptionally well on pens and especially hybrids, ones with acrylic and wood. Kind of the wax buffs it up, holds a grit that makes buffing it a little easier. I like to turn up the speed to about a quarter. Gives me a little bit better buffing without getting too hot. Like with micro meshes, you have to watch the heat on your micro mesh or you burn them. Well, with this being on paper towel or blue shop towel, you don't have to worry as much about burning your paper towel. You're gonna throw this away anyway. When I use micro mesh nonstop, I would go through a set of uh, pads, the smaller sets, in less than a month. This, la this one set of cans has lasted me probably 100 pens. You don't use much and it brings up a really beautiful shot. You can see it already on this pen. It polishes your bushings up pretty too. And here's the last step is step three. And this is a lot softer one. 
little application, a little buffing, turn the speed up on the last pass. And we're just about done with the turning portion. We'll just check it. See if we got any chips or scratches. Looks pretty good to me. I think I'm gonna take take these over and I might hit them real quick on the, the white wheel just to bring them up to that much better of a shot. But other than that, next is assembly. I've laid out all the pieces to be assembled and I use a bar clamp. Please don't mind the dirty background. I use a bar clamp to assemble each part. You press it in as well as you can. Very slowly, bring it up till it's tight, back it back off. Now on this is a princess kit, and some other kits have the same setup too. Comes with a little connector. Now you don't want to push on this part of the connector, you can mess up the threads. So what I found is a socket. This one happens to be a 30, a nine, 30 seconds inch socket. Fits perfectly over the threads and pushes right on that flat. So you don't have to worry about damaging the threads. Just press that right up so it's just snug. refill the spring on the end it's right in the mechanism screws right on work the mechanism a couple times make sure the pen nib retracts the pen nib doesn't retract all the way sometimes it won't This one's pretty good. You can take a small drill bit and just take the slightest bit off of that little plastic insert there. I don't have to worry about that on this one. Sometimes you just gotta make sure it's seated in there properly. Now for the top portion, press the band with all the little gems in it first. Then press that in and in. Presses together. This one came out a little bluer than this one, than the diamond painting thing. This one come out a little more purple, this one come out a little more blue. They're all a little different. Thanks for watching.